Hey everybody, uh, Batjack here. As you can see, what we have on the table, Smith & Wesson, it's a blue box. It's a plastic one, not uh, not cardboard or uh, one of those ones with the uh, metal corners on it and everything. So it's a, it's a new one. And it's a new Smith & Wesson. Let's open it up. Oh my, it's a stainless steel Smith & Wesson snubby. Um, let's look at the packaging and see what we got with the lock here. Get your fire casing. And yes, the keys. The key lock. Don't know what I exactly think of the key lock just yet because I've never owned a Smith & Wesson with a key lock. Of course, you get the manual here. I guess this is kind of a generic manual and some other paperwork. All right, set that aside and let's get to the gun. All right, out of the box, onto the table. Let's start taking a look at it. Let's get a good close up. Um, you know, I struggled with this because when I was looking to buy it or definitely obsessing over it, could not find too many videos on it. Um, what I mean is this particular one, the 629, this one's a Dash 6. Halo edition, uh, so it's a new offering. Uh, you can still buy it. Smith and Wesson still has it on their website. Although, funny thing about if you check out the Smith and Wesson website, when you look at this thing, the picture they have, it makes it look like the barrel is about four inches, but it's not. Let's go ahead and check this thing. We should always do that first. Um, but it's not. You know, you can see it's a really short. Uh, barrel of gun the the three inches really where it comes from is um, They're counting this as an inch right here pretty much your barrel right here is about two inches protruding uh, the rest of it is um, measured throughout the uh, the Forcing cone area uh, maybe just over two inches, but uh, pretty much it's about two inches right here So that's to give you a kind of a perspective. It's a big old end frame. So it's a uh, Used to be the biggest frame that the Smith & Wesson made until the 500 Magnum came out with the X frame, but uh, this one pretty much is the end frame. It does have a key lock, which um, I've never owned a Smith & Wesson with a key lock, so I don't exactly have an opinion on that yet. Well, actually I do. If I had a personal preference with that, if I had a choice rather to have it or not have it, I'd probably not have it because I kind of don't. Uh, I kind of fall in the same category with probably most people that say I'd I'd not like to have a. Uh, I would not like to have a. Would not like to have that device there that where if you accidentally lo uh, lost a key or something, you know uh, what happens there. You can always turn it over and uh, take the side plate off and take the guts out and try to get rid of it. But um, I'm not going to do that. I actually thought about that, but you know what? I'm not going to do it because. I want to keep the gun stocked the way Smith & Wesson intended you to have it, so uh, not altering things like that. Anyway, uh, if it, you know, I don't know how well it's going to show up on camera, but it is a big gun. Um, I actually I was quite surprised when I took a look at it and held it in my hands for the very first time. Um, I mean, I understood it was an end frame and everything, but, you know, I got my old Dirty Harry special right here. This is my, my Model 29 I've had for a long, long time, six inch barrel. This thing is a beauty. Um, I've had this thing for quite some time. It's my first uh, Magnum. This is my Smith & Wesson. I bought this out of a, uh, a pawn shop from uh, Arkansas. Uh, Monty's Pawn and Gun, I believe it's called. Anyway, I bought this a while back and he gave me a good price for it. And I've always had it and always will have it. This is a great gun. Um, and then I, of course I have the eight and three eights, but uh, you know, that's kind of like a dirty hairy gun. <laughs> it is a dirty hairy gun, just longer. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's cool. Uh, the six inch barrel is a great size, you know, of course, dirty hairy and everything, you know, but then the eight three eights really just takes it over the top. It makes it like holding a big rifle in your hands or something, you know, or a little mini, mini rifle per se, you know. And um, so I'm sure the, you know, the accuracy on these things, you know, everybody says, ah, oh, it's short barrel. You know what? It's not that the gun's inaccurate. It's how accurate can you be? Can you hold it steady enough to where you can, um, you know, hit what you're talking about? So let's go ahead and talk about the MIM parts, M-I-M, -M, right? Machine injected metal. So unlike the, um, the older revolvers, these, uh, the trigger and hammer is MIM. Um, so... 
it's uh, injected molded metal, melted metal, and they inject it. And uh, so some people are really against that, and some people are really for that. Um, I must say, some of the uh, the the pros on it is uh, that you get a hardened trigger or hammer all the way through. The uh, old school ones, the uh, just the outer, the you know, it's the uh, the outer layer is what's been hardened. Now, if you break through that, you're coming into softer metal now. So this, you're able to, if you needed to, um, you know, sand it or whatever, you, you're not going to break through. It's hard all the way through. Um, it's not quite as attractive as the uh, the color case hardening uh, triggers and stuff. And I did notice that uh, you can see, I don't know if you can see at the right angle, but um, the trigger does have some, uh, I guess, sections where you can see where the mold was. Um, it's not like it's a mistake or anything, but you can see the spaces, the, the square. It's kind of like a squarish kind of thing there. But um, it's just part of the mold, I guess, where it is. And um, oddly, the trigger is smooth on this one. It's not um, serrated or checkered or anything. The hammer's checkered, but the uh, the trigger is actually smooth. Unlike uh, on my my 29 here, it's serrated, and you can see the the nice color case hardening on it and everything. Big wide checkered hammer, and uh, this one does have it. It does have a big nice wide checkered hammer. Really nice. You can grab it, cock it back really easily, and everything. The action on the gun is really nice. Some of the other things, I'm really happy that this one, um, let's get into the grips here. I'm really happy that this one came with the wood grips because when it comes to revolvers in me, I'm real old school and I really, really like the original old wood grips. Um, you know, when a lot of these cases where these are especially older revolvers, um, people with older Smiths or Colts or whatnot, you know, they, uh, they're trying to sell it to you or whatnot and they don't have the original wood grips and they're trying to play a collector's game with you, um, well, that's something you can use to your advantage as a buyer. Uh, hey, you know, uh, for instance, uh, a Colt Diamondback. A Colt Diamondback, part of Snake Guns, I have a couple videos on that on my channel here. The original grips is very important to have on that because if you uh, actually try to look up those grips online, they're very expensive. They can run a couple hundred bucks maybe in 300 and probably more in the future. So, but I'm really glad that Smith & Wesson offers um, a nice uh, throwback to the original grips. They're not exactly, to me, the uh, the newer grips that they're making now are a little thinner profiled. The wood seems a little bit more, uh, for say, uh, artificial. <laughs> not that it, it feels artificial or anything, but when you pop them off and you look on the inside and everything, it almost looks like uh, some kind of like generic uh, particle board. But they look great on the outside, but they're a little thinner. But they're definitely nothing like the original uh, when they back when they used to make it. This seems like they actually machined this out and everything, versus the new stuff now seems all pressed. But either way, I'd much rather take these over the black rubber grips any day of the week. Um, definitely not a fan of the black rubber grips. Although I'm sure they're very, I mean, I'm not knocking the function on them. I'm just knocking cosmetics wise. It just doesn't, to me it's not appealing. To me there's something to be said about nice wood, you know, the elegance of it. It's really cool, the classic look. And I like the fact that, you know, it tapers out. It's got a little finger grooves in it and everything. They put a little uh, scaling, like, looks like scale checkering, like fish scales almost. The logo is nice and big, but it's uh, it's stamped in or, you know, pressed in, unlike the uh, old school ones where it's like a gold medallion or something. So, and uh, this one is a round butt, so... And that's also what kind of makes it a little bit different from the old uh, big Dirty Harry gun. This, the Dirty Harry gun's a square butt. And what that means, I'll give you a, an example on what, the, what that all means. Okay, like on this uh, J-frame here, this uh, Smith & Wesson, you can see the butt here pretty much is rounded. That's what they would call a round butt. And um, like on this one here, I have a, a Model 10, a very early Model 10. And this is what they call a square butt. You can see it squares off, and it's a lot wider. 
so the round butts are a lot thinner and rounded and the squares they're a little bit um, larger and squared off so basically now minus the frame sizes because obviously we're looking at k-frame j-frame but um, if I took the grips off of my dirty hairy gun my model 29 and tried to put it on that uh, 629 it would not work so just a uh, different uh, frame contours there that's why it wouldn't work you couldn't buy the round butt conversion stocks which will look like the big wide um, stock grip you know the grip and it will fit onto the round butt it's called the uh, round butt conversion in fact Smith & Wesson you can still go on their website and buy a pair of those um, they're not like I said they don't quite match up to the uh, old stuff but you know it's still I'm very happy that they they offer it um, you know so I'm not gonna knock it at all too bad because I, you know hey at least they still offer it so uh, the back strap on this gun is not serrated it's smooth so that's usually usually it's serrated but it's not and the logo it seems to be that the logo is I don't know if that's branded in like they they, they I think they brand them now but um or slight or really lightly etched or whatnot but however the one thing that did concern me that I'm glad it uh, it's not is I was wondering if they actually stamped like the 44 Magnum on the barrel and the Smith & Wesson on the other side and they're you know infamous you know you can always tell it's a Smith & Wesson right there um, I was wondering if they if they stamped these still or if it was uh, you know that branding or that whatever that is that etching indeed it's stamped so that's really cool that they uh they still do that the logo is the logo i'm not complaining about it. it's really nice it's there it's just real subtle but uh real classy it adds a nice classy look to it the key latch or the cylinder release latch is that newer style with the uh, cut off angle i'm not sure if i like it yet i'm still kind of playing around with it so the gun locks up super tight and uh, you know when i close these things i always try to go on the crane here because it helps it that's you know mostly because if you're putting it pressure over here i'm not saying it, it's bad for it or anything but i've kind of made it a habit myself to push it in on the crane and then um something else on the uh especially on a blued gun you'll see the turn ring uh this one has it but you just don't notice it as much as on a blued gun uh the turn ring should actually only go so far to it there shouldn't be anything after the uh here's the lead in to the notch and there shouldn't be anything extra after it well that's caused by it, and it's just a common mistake it doesn't hurt it but you can always tell because a uh, if you go now Smith & Wesson's go counterclockwise so if you go clockwise with it you're going backwards on it so it's the lead-in hand is coming this way instead of opposed to going the correct way it's supposed to go but uh, it, again it's not a uh, it's not that much of an issue but it's yeah, it's a common thing. That's usually what happens to it. So, of course, unless if it's starting over here, then you're you're um, starting up further down here and then scratching it all the way over there. So, almost doesn't really matter. But at least you're grinding it on the on the uh, on the lead in instead of going through the back. Anyway, uh, the sights are pretty nice. They are nice, uh, nice rear outline and the red insert on the ramp on the front. Really cool. And it is, if you haven't already noticed, it's a frame mounted firing pin. So the firing pin is not on a hammer like the uh, vintage ones. It's on the frame. But however, if you really think about that, some people go, oh man, they're changing, you know, all this stuff about it. If you think about it, the uh, Colt Python, is what was considered the uh, the greatest revolver ever made, um, even though a Smith will outshoot it. Um, but it's got a frame mounted firing pin, so uh, you know, so it's not it can't be all that bad. Yeah, a little something odd is I uh, coming from a guy that owns a uh, three inch forty four Magnum here. I don't like recoil and. So I know what you're all saying, well, why the heck would you buy something like this? Well, because I'll shoot a 44 Special out of this, and a 44 Special is basically 
the like um, like our 38 special and then you got a 357 Magnum um, so 38 is a lot uh, more of a moderate cartridge in power uh, so same goes with a 44 special and then the 44 Magnum obviously the casing is a little bit longer you got more gunpowder going on in there but when you shoot a special out of out of a 29 like a, my Dirty Harry guns that's what I shoot out of them as a 44 special it's very comfortable to shoot very easy to shoot and very very nice to shoot um i can't tell you if you've never done it try it because there's not this boom and then you know you got to regain sight picture and everything like that it's really easy to just pop them out of there and it makes the gun a real pleasure to shoot so this one will be no exception i'm sure so anyway that's a look at the uh 629 the Taylor edition three inch barrel it is a beautiful gun i must say it is um Definitely one of the sexiest guns I uh, got my hands on. So without a doubt, it is a beautiful, beautiful piece. So thanks for watching. That's the uh, review from the open box to the tabletop. And we'll be doing more videos with it definitely. And also uh, coming up soon, I will tell you why I bought it. Yeah, there is a method, another method to the madness. There is a movie or a TV show rather, the reason I bought it. So, and I'll share that with you on another video, but until then, please like, share, and subscribe. I'm Bat Jack. Thanks for watching.